Welcome to the fight game. He's Ice Water. I'm Puma. Of course, we're going to talk about the fight uh, yesterday. Music and Fury. And the little man comes out victorious against the uh, Gypsy King. And I predicted last week it would be a 12-round unanimous decision. It was a split decision. But nonetheless, the little man um, took over. I felt he won the first few rounds, uh, first three. Then you had Tyson maybe winning two, three um, in the middle there. And then um, when he got to the, probably the ninth round, I thought the referee should let it go a little further just to just, just close this out right here. Um, a lot of people said, oh, he just won because of that, that one round. I don't think so. I think Yusuf fought a very smart fight. Um, he didn't fight like a little man. He fought like a big dude. He was going to the body earlier. And I think that took a toll on Tyson Fury uh, towards the end of uh, the fight where he really didn't couldn't muster up enough energy to try to win the fight. But there were a lot of things we're going to talk about in this fight. Your, your kind of, you know, uh, perspective of the fight, man. Well, I think early on, uh, Usi showed, was particularly in the first round and maybe round two and even maybe round three that he was trying to be more of the finesse. He was doing more shots to the body. He was landing more punches. But I think Fury was... Even round two and three, he was kind of, you know, getting himself together. He could have called it either way. But I think at one point, Fury started to take over in the middle round. He literally started taking over. And then uh, that's when I think he started to show as if he was winning the fight. And then maybe round seven all the way through the end, um, Usyk started making things happen. Um, I don't think people really realize how hurt uh, Usyk was. I think he was hurt at some point in the middle because he's the his his first uh, approach early on in the fight was he was the aggressive coming coming coming, and then he started to back off and slow down a little bit because I think he was getting hit, and with the hooks and things like that that uh, Fury was uh, throwing, I think it bothered him, and then later on. Uh, as I said to you before earlier, off off air, I think Fury started playing around, and you run into almost like a damaged fighter or a hurt fighter uh, in Usyk, who at that point was like, you know, it's either kill or be killed, and I think he had his whole mentality came like he was a wounded animal that he was coming on. He fight like he had to come out that way, and I think that uh, no, just no taking away anything from Usyk because he did what he had to do. But I do not think that Fury came in with the right mindset later to finish the fight correctly. Because I think if he would have done that, it could have been a different outcome. He would not, perhaps would not have gotten caught. When you're playing around, jumping around, playing jokes and whatever. I think the corner was trying to alert him that he needed to have a different attitude, take it more seriously. And when he didn't, he got caught. And then, of course, in the post uh, uh, press conference, he wanted to say if they would have told me, I would have put, I'd have done it differently. Nobody so has, I think it's a different, huh? Nobody has to tell you when you're a fighter. And, yeah, yeah, but I know, but I mean, he can say what he wants to say. My point over there is the premise of I think, and that's why the the corner may have been frustrated with him is because he started to not take it seriously. He was joking because he thought he was ahead. And if his mind, I think we talked about earlier, maybe perhaps about you know certain things, but I think it was. Uh, Tyson Fury's mindset that was his undoing. It was, that was his mindset. It was undoing. Because when you played around and you didn't take it seriously, you got beat. Yeah, I saw him playing in the corner. And I'm like, he's acting like he's winning this fight. And I'm like, why is, why is he doing that? And I kind of felt that he was kind of playing to the judges, playing to the crowd, like I got this, you know, under control or I, I'm winning this fight. And from my point of view is like you're not winning this fight dude this guy is getting to the body he's you know he's, he's really the aggressor here why are you playing around like you're winning winning this fight um a lot of people are saying that uh i guess a number of people are saying that there won't be a rematch i think there will be a rematch i think it's gonna still be the same outcome i felt that in round nine the ref should have let it go a few a few more seconds to see if he could really take this guy out put him down on the ground I think the ref kind of saved Tyson Fury at that particular point. Um, Tyson um, tried to recover, but it seems like those body shots in the earlier rounds really took its toll. 
and um, I, I can see where where Usyk uh, was kind of hurt, and the, the body blows were, were getting to him at some particular point. Uh, but I, I I thought it was a unanimous unanimous decision that um, Usyk won this fight. I kind of see Tyson Fury. I saw it in the last fight with Ngannou that he his skills are diminishing, and the reason why I picked Usyk is because I felt that Usyk had he he's more of a technician and he's more skillful than Tyson Fury, and he he kind of showed it. Um, he could not, for whatever reason, and I speak of Tyson Fury, get away from that left to the body. Anytime Usyk wanted to land that left to the body after that jab, it's like um, Tyson couldn't get away from it and you could see him kind of walking away or in some instances kind of holding a little bit. Uh, but it, it seems to me, and maybe I'm wrong, that Tyson Fury, he's getting a little older. I know Usyk is older than him, but Usyk's been here before, you know, winning cruiserweight championship, winning in the Olympics, all this other stuff. Um, he only has, what, about 20 something fights. Um, he's undefeated. I see, it seemed like the, the older and more worn fighter in the fight was Tyson Fury when I was watching. No, I get that. Um, I think I want to disagree with you a little bit. But I even looked at some independent fights, and then they mentioned that they thought that uh, Fury won round one. One guy even said that he thought Fury won two through six, and Usyk won seven through 12. And I'm, I told you off air, I think that uh, when we got to round nine, and Usyk had that 10-8 round. I knew the fight was over. At that point, I knew he was going to, Fury was going to lose. And unless he came back strong uh, against Usyk, he was going to lose the fight, came back with a different uh, uh, thought process. Um, and we mentioned it before, like I told you, I'm not sure. I don't think it's the skill set. Skills might have diminished a little bit, but they had mentioned, diminished that much. He would not have been able, Fury, that is, been able to sustain and do what he did. He broke that man's jaw. He broke his jaw. And uh, Usyk's team had a, had a plan to try to come back and still become more aggressive, which they did, and they won the fight. But I think Fury, is, when he looks back at it, and maybe he doesn't want to fight anymore, or he doesn't, it's not that big a deal, whatever. But I think he kind of took it for granted. You mentioned that, you know, in the prior previous fight against the UFC fighter, he had the same attitude. And maybe, this, I don't think it was the skill, this, this, this guy, has taken on some of the baddest guys, men. He beat Klitschko. He beat uh, Deontay Wilder. I mean, three, almost really like three times that who knocks people in the, the next week. And I think that Fury just did not come in with the right attitude. Um, I think he thought he had a game plan. And once he got in the middle rounds, I thought he, I think he thought, I am winning. Now I'm going to coast. And he coasted. And that lacks a days ago attitude and the coasting cost him and for cost him the fight too. So I don't know. I do think though one time with that, I'm not gonna go too deep into this, but I am interested about the uh whatever the substance or whatever uh Usyk we see in round four when he was when he was in a bad situation. Then he came back with well, iron energetic. You know, it's everybody talks to this day about Panama Lewis and the and the air prior mix, the mix. This was mixed too. Where is that at? <laughs> Where is that at? Mix two. Y'all dog my man Aaron Pryor for the mix, the mix. Not that bottle, the one I mixed. But about mix, this is the mix two. The mix two. All of a sudden, this man was like, how? And all of a sudden, oh, he's okay. Where is that cry? See, see how y'all do? Where is that cry? The mix, the mix. Two. Okay. Yeah, I, I did notice uh, his trainer asked him something. He said, yes. Trainer kind of leaned in. I don't know if he sniffed it or what, but you know, and all of a sudden, yeah, but that, that, that had nothing to do with the fight, I, though, right? Yeah, yeah, I, okay. I, I, I can see through that. I saw that, and I'm like, hmm, that's that's a little sus. But uh, yeah, I, I did see that. I will admit to that. Uh, but uh, I said last week, I felt that he was going to win. I thought if it went to split decision, that they would give it to Tyson Fury. But as soon as they said that, that's the only time I was concerned about the fight. I'm like, uh-oh, here we go. Here we go. Here's, here's where, it, where it turns, turns, you know, to the other side. But uh, I thought it was a decent fight. They're talking about a rematch. They're talking about Tyson Fury coming in heavier. I don't think that's going to help him come in the heavier because he was laboring at the weight he was at uh, last night. Uh, I don't think a heavier Tyson Fury with fighting a skillful um, uh, music 
is is going to fare at all against against his opponent. I just think he's skilled. He he can make adjustments in the ring, and I don't think Tyson Fury really kind of anticipated that the adjustments that Usyk was going to make. No, I I receive all that, but I want to know which which uh, Tyson Fury going to show up. What's his mindset? I want to know if we're going to allow some more substances. I want to know if there's more more substances coming in. And uh, really, I think, like I said, Tyson Fury, the heavy, the heaviness, the, the more weight, I don't think it's a big deal. I think he just needs to be decide whether or not he wants to fight. And does he really want to fight? Does he want to win? I mean, clearly, when he wants to make his mind up and comes in, he can make a difference, which he did in this fight. I mean, how many people have you ever heard of that Uzi ever they broke Uzi's jaw? Andy Joshua couldn't touch him. He broke that man's jaw. That says a lot. You know, we kind of skim over that. And maybe that substance helped dead in the pain. I don't know. I, I'm not going to say what I think that substance was. I'm thinking that Usyk uh, broke or damaged uh, Tyson's nose in one of those. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, but that jaw, that, uh, that substance and that, that jaw is like, yeah. And then you're still going through. You know, they wire people's mouth shut when your jaw is broken. Yeah. So I don't know. But like I said, whatever that substance was, it probably was. Very helpful in, in 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 masking that pain. Maybe uh, you know, smell the salt. We'll, 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 yeah, we'll. right. Uh, so, smell the salt here. You don't lean into. Yeah. So this makes an interesting heavyweight division because um, I started thinking last night. Also, maybe this is why Tyson Fury kind of held off in fighting fighting Anthony Joshua. Um, and and maybe this is why he's kind of because I thought he was going to retire after the Wilder fights. I, I honestly thought that was it for him. I think he's 37, uh, 35 years old now, um, but he looks like a more worn fighter at this particular point. Um, you're right about whether or not he wants to fight or not, whether or not he's taking it seriously. Um, I I know his trainers and his corner were you know it seemed like they were frustrated. I'm speaking of Tyson Fury in in the corner, but. Um, if he doesn't do the rematch, who does Usyk fight after this? Does he fight with Deontay Wilder, the, the winner of the Wilder Zhang fight? Um, does he fight, um, you know, another champion, a UK champion? I, I kind of thought maybe about two or three weeks ago when we talked about this, if Usyk wins, I mean, there there are so many possibilities of different fights happening that um, we're going to lose track of who's fighting who, who wants to fight who. And I think it's going to be a mass dash to try to get the undisputed heavyweight championship, five of them, from Yusuf. Yeah, um, if he does not fight Fury again, um, I think he probably will because it's, it's the money. It makes the most sense for people who want to see again. Again, uh, Fury's going to tell you now I'm ready because they should have told me or I, I'll be ready this time. I won't take it, take me. Uh, for granted anymore, and so that's going to sell that fight anyway. But if he does not face um, Fury in a rematch, it's kind of wide open. Nobody wants to see the Anthony Joshua fight again. I know I don't, uh, because he's shown you even if Anthony Joshua was the better um, in a better state mentally to fight, he's going to do the same thing. He's going to box him. You can't get to him. And Joshua sometimes to me is set up with certain opponents that he can really. The styles fit him, right? You don't see Anthony Joshua chasing somebody down, a boxer, a more, a more mobile fighter like Usyk and catching them and putting them to sleep. Nah, that's why he lost twice. There's a reason for that. But uh, unless there's somebody else coming out, Wilder, we don't, I mean, I think the Zang fight, we'll see, is Wilder back? Does he want it anymore? I mean, Wilder almost, to me, is almost in a similar state of uh, Fury. Do yeah. you ever want to fight again? You had three classic battles. Are you doing it for the cash? Do you still have that 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 uh, eye of the tiger, that dog in you? Why, why are you doing this anymore? Other than that, all we can do really, I think, would be for Usyk is to fight maybe an up and coming guy. I'm not sure because is there anybody else worthwhile that I'm looking at right now? I'm looking at uh, a couple of fighters. Is there anybody else worthwhile that can Andy be a challenge? Yeah. Uh, I'm looking at Andy Ruiz. Um, there's a young, uh, I can't think of the the, the African American uh, fighter, young and up upcoming fighter that does, yeah. that 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 that's uh, you know uh, next up. Anderson and Miller, yeah. I mean, yeah. 
But right. I, I, I guess when I'm looking at, I mean, I'm looking at the comments, I'm looking at watching these guys come up, and I'm like, are any of them skilled enough? See, the thing that I want to give Usi credit for is, as a cruiserweight, he knows what boxing is. He moves around real well, and he's able to handle against bigger guys. He's so mobile, he will cause a major problem for most heavyweights. Yeah. And right now, I don't know, and maybe I need to look deeper into it part of the investigation of some of these other up-and-coming guys' career. I don't see anybody that can really sustain a true matchup against him. That's why I thought Tyson Fury would at least be able to hit him, and he did. The average person, because of the mobility and the versatility of Uzi, could never hit him, could catch him, because he's a cruiserweight. And that's why he came in heavy, but he's still able to move and bounce around. Most heavyweights are. They're lethargic and they come forward. Yeah. And I think that was the issue, so I don't know. Yeah. I kind of look at this in the same scenario where uh, Ali uh, fought Joe Frazier for the third time. And, you know, one of his um, handlers in the corner, Pacheco, said, you know, I wish you to retire after that because mm -hmm. he wasn't the same. And I kind of look at it as, you know, you're fighting Deontay Wilder three times and you're just not the same fighter. Those fights take a lot out of you, especially those epic battles where you're, you're coming off the canvas, the other guy's coming off the canvas. I mean, big, big haymakers. I, I can't see people recovering from that, um, having those epic fights. So that's why I said earlier about uh, Tyson Fury, it felt like if you had a guy like Francis Ngannou who never fought before, has some skills, but to be able to touch you up like that in his first professional fight, maybe, just maybe um, you're not the fighter that you used to be. And, and then, you, you know, those fights have taken some toll. And I kind of looked at the fight last night with Tyson Fury. You, you, I'm used to him doing certain things to kind of control the fight and, and be more energetic. I just didn't see that last night. And I just saw Usyk really kind of being the aggressor, um, taking the fight to Tyson Fury, even when, you know, he, um, in those middle rounds, um, Tyson wasn't to me as as dominant as, as the months before and was able to kind of play around a little bit and get caught in that ninth round. Uh, I don't know what the ref was thinking, but, you know, I would let it go a little while and see whether or not this guy can recover actually falling to the ground and not stepping in there. Um, but your thoughts on it. Um, could it be the Ali scenario where you fought a guy three times and the fight is out of you at this particular point? That's a possibility. I can see that. One of the things I'm thinking too is you mentioned about the age of Uzi. I can see. I don't know how much longer he wants to be around. Maybe he just retires as undefeated. I mean, and just walks away because you're thinking about the age and he's done everything unless you want to drop back down. I don't think he's dropping down to a lighter weight now because he's there. And maybe you just you retire as champion and receive all the accolades or you or you sit back on the fence until uh, they come up with somebody worthwhile money-wise. Yeah. You know, I mean, you could fight Anthony Joshua again for the third time, but maybe somebody else steps up and says, hey, I'm ready for this. But, uh, you know, I don't know. Like I said, They'll probably get the, the rematch off because of the fact that it was it was an action-packed fight. They both were coming at one another, and people want to see it again because uh, Fury could always sell the fact that I wasn't myself, and you know I, I'm ready this time like he did when he fought in Ngannou. I'm going to show you this time when I'm ready for it. So I don't know. It's a lot of unanswered questions. But again, like I said, I'm not sure there's anybody out there in the division that really can hold a candle to Uzi. And I thought uh, Fury was that guy. I still think he is when he, if he ever comes with the right mindset. I think he still can be. But other than that, who other, what other fighters are there out there that can really get in there and, and give him? Because I want to see a real contest. I mean, I want to see Uzi challenge, and he was challenging this guy. He was challenging. I don't know if anyone else can do that. Otherwise, he's just gonna go through him because he's more versatile, the better boxer, and nobody else can really do that. Going to the next fight I want to talk about, uh, I, I, I sat up at ESPN and watched this fight, Navarrete, and I'm, I'm going to stop watching Navarrete because he, he's part of some of the worst boxing in matches that I've ever seen. <laughs> there's no discipline, there's no skills. He's just, it's almost like he's drunk and he's going in there to rate the fight. Um, uh, there was the vacant WBO lightweight uh, title last night with uh, uh, Dennis um, Berinchik. 
and Nav Emmanuel Navarrete and um, Berinchik, or I hope I'm pronouncing his name right, uh, wins the um, vacancy uh, in, that, in that title. But it was like one of the worst fights you ever wanted to watch. And you, you, you almost kind of, it was a, a more laughable. The big fight coming up next week is Taylor versus Catterall. Uh, I think that's part two. And then the, the week after that, you have Wilder and Zane. Which one do you want to talk about? I think I'm gonna go with Wilder and Zane just because of the unknown, right? You think about um what uh Wilder, which Wilder is gonna come out. Does he still have that fire? Zane, of course, is older, and this is another opportunity for him after he lost his last fight, another opportunity to show that he still has it. So if Wilder can dispose of him, it's maybe we're saying it's time for you to hang it up, right? And and, and I think a lot of people do not take the a, a fighter's will into account when they get into the ring. You can say, oh, yeah, I want to fight, I'm ready. But if you don't have the will, still have the strength or whatever, the know-how, you have the know-how, but the, the instinct is really wanted and it's pressing, I think it affects the way that you go about your business. And that's what I'm looking for from Wilder, whether or not he still wants it. Uh, you know, some people say that he got the money, the opportunity to spend a lot of time with his family, and he's happy. He had to be that monster anymore, right? We at home, relaxing, everything's cool, loving back. You know, you had to summon summons up that monster anymore to kind of come out and go after your opponent. And if he doesn't have it, actually, God bless him. I, I'm happy for him. Walk away. You know that. There's, hey, we love you as a boxer, but don't do it for the money. I mean, you do it for the prestige and whatnot, but if you're not red, not the same guy, walk away, man. I know it's easy to say because some people need the money, but I don't want to see the one thing. I want to see you compete. I want to see them fight for championships. But I never, ever, and I've been watching boxing a long time, I never want to see any boxer permanently hurt, damage, to, uh, to suffer enough damage that affect them for the rest of their life as they move forward. I never want to see that. I enjoy the sport. But I never want to see anybody permanently damaged. Yeah, well, I mean, you look at it, you talk about the first fight. Thing is about it's just about Josh Taylor, right? Josh Taylor, the issue with Josh Taylor is styles make fights. Anybody that's mobile, or most people that are mobile, opponents they are for Josh, for uh Josh Taylor, he has a problem with. Because he's straightforward, as we said before, almost like the heavyweights we talked about. And he doesn't have the ability to really kind of be uh, to be more of a, a technician where he can change his style based on who he's fighting. He's kind of straightforward kind of guy. Kind of always a type of guy that's all over the place. He's busy, 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 busy. And at times he can cause a problem because if he catches you, he's just real busy. He's kind of like Pacquiao. He's all over you. You know, he's kind of a in in the in the uh, in the, the telephone booth type fighter. I'm going to stay right there with you. But the question is though. What Josh, what what type of uh, fight is Josh Taylor going to fight? Is he going to learn from the first fight and come up and do what he got to do, or is he going to be try to move, make some changes, or make some moves? I don't think he's going to do any of that. I think he's going to be Josh Taylor is who he is. Hell of a fighter, right situation, right opponent can win a lot of fights. Has won a lot of fights, but in this situation, we we'll just have to see how he adjusts to to Catterall again. All right. All, calling all Cal, Canelo Alvarez fans. Calling all Canelo Alvarez fans. There was a fight or talk of a fight against Terrence Crawford where the Saudi Arabian group wanted to offer money, a lucrative deal for this fight. And Canelo Alvarez walks away from it. So my thing is, what other excuses uh, can Canelo come up with uh, with this particular news coming out. Wow. Um, I did hear about that. Um, I think the biggest concern besides the money for Canelo Alvarez is at what way would this take place? And I don't think any, there's no way in heck Canelo Alvarez is coming to anything lower than 168. And the question is, can Terrence Crawford get to 168? Probably will want to uh, catch weight, maybe 164, 165. I don't see the Canelo Alvarez coming down to 168. No, nowhere lower than that. And I think that would be the issue. And I'm not saying that he's not afraid, that he's afraid of Terrence Crawford. But again, 
If it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. It don't make sense. What I mean by that is Canelo's getting older. He may not have the same skill set as he had before. And you're fighting a very dangerous individual in his Terrence Crawford, who, from a boxing standpoint alone, has the skill set to cause you many problems. Because Canelo, as a, being a, normally a slow starter, would have time catching up to perhaps to, uh, against Crawford. And Crawford, at times, had been a slow starter, but when he fought Errol Spence, he was more the aggressor. He came out from the beginning and changed his, uh, his approach. So with that being said, I think it's more or less the, not saying that he doesn't want to fight it because he turned it down, but 168, that's the question. And of course, if Canelo's talking about fighting at 175, 168, 175, he's very comfortable at that weight. Can Crawford make that weight? Because Canelo's not coming down any lower. Well, I'm going to be a little different on this. Every time there is a, a fighter that can give Carnelo Alvarez a run for his money, there's always a problem. There's always something that, you know, he's kind of backing away from. So here's the fight that people want to see. They want to see Better Beat. They want to see Crawford. And those are the fights that people will pay money to go see for some strange reason. I'm not going to say you're afraid or whatever. When these big time fights come up where these fighters are willing to go, because I've heard Terrence Crawford say, I'm willing to come up to 168 just to get this fight. I'm not sure that's the problem. I think the, the common denominator here is this is a guy who's like, I'm Mexican, I do what I want. But when um, it comes down to fighting some fighters that will give you a run for your money, you kind of, you know, come up with excuses on why you can't fight them. To me, that tarnishes your legacy of being the best Mexican fighter out of Mexico. That tarnishes your legacy because I've never seen, um, you know, other Mexican fighters, and we, we, we know them all, um, turn down a fight because, oh, we can't get to the catch weight or, hey, I want to be the best. I want to fight the best. Let's get it on. So... I don't think he's going into that same kind of mode as other Mexican fighters coming out of that region. Um, and to me, it just smells of fear. Fear I'm gonna lose and I'm gonna lose money. And people are not gonna think of me the way that they think of uh, other Mexican fighters that preceded him. So I'm, I'm looking at it a little bit suspect now because you have the opportunity, you named your price, 100, 100 million, 200 million. You got the Saudis who are really willing to put up this money, and all of a sudden you're coming up with another excuse on why you don't want to fight. So, you know, if you're a Canelo Alvarez fan, okay, but your boy's looking like he's a little bit fearful. He was, you know, frogging up after the fight when he won Cinco de Mayo, but now all of a sudden, uh, 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 I, I, I don't know what to do. So I smell a little fear in this because when you have fighters that I'm willing to come to this weight to fight you, and now you're coming up with other excuses, I can't call you the best fighter of all time or the best Mexican fighter of all time. Well, I mean, I, I can see your, your perspective. Uh, I'm going to take a little different uh, view on that. Um, I don't know if he's afraid. I do agree. He did turn down the uh, Crawford fight. Uh, a better view. You know, you you moving up to 175, you already lost to Baval, and now you're going to better leave, better leave and Baval fighting, and we'll see the outcome of that, which is a great matchup. The one fight I do think that um, we'll find, I think will really tell us whether or not Canelo is really, I think he is picking and choosing, but if he really does not want the smoke, if you will, and uh, they're saying that this guy might end up fighting a winner better than even Baval, he's going to move up, is... If I'm a, the Saudis, if you want to see a fight and you want to put it all on the table to find out where Canelo is, is make him an offer. Give him, put the money on the table versus David Benavides. Okay? 200 million, 250, whatever it is, put it on the table, make the offer, see what he wants to do. That's, that's the fight I want to see. Because that way you don't have to worry about Crawford and the catchway and whether or not Crawford can really make it up here. And then you say, well, you know, he was a, a blown up a super middleweight, right? All that crap. Then 175 was too much. 168 with David Benavidez makes a lot of sense to me. Both of them can make it. They both are right there too. So 
I hear what you're saying there, but the sergeant, if you really want a cal top-notch caliber fight, and you want to see if Canelo's willing to still put it all on the line and risk his mega, the mega Mexican boxing legacy and his and inherit in the what his legacy, put the 200 plus million, 200 million dollar plus on the line and say, hey, we'll give you this for Benavidez. Let's go. If you don't want it, now we know, as you just said, we know exactly what you're talking about. We received that. He doesn't want to smoke. But before we, before I throw him away, I want them to make the offer for that fight. See what happens. All right. Any other boxing news you want to get to? Oh, uh, I cannot wait. I know it's in June. I cannot wait for the Javante versus Davis versus Frank Martin fight. I think there's a lot of stuff going in between. Um, I just want to see it from a stylistic standpoint. A lot of chirping, a lot of talking. Um, I want to see that fight. I think it's going to be one hell of a fight. I just want to see what happens because after that, I think a lot of start, stuff starts to shake it out or whatnot. Um, I am a little interested to see what's happening because I guess now they're saying that supposedly that uh, Devin Haney is trying to take some legal action against Garcia about the outcome of the fight as if he's trying to get the fight changed, the results changed because of maybe some substance abuse or something like that or failed drug test. I find that kind of a little different for Haney. I'm looking to see, you already have your belt still. What are you trying to prove to prove that this guy cheated to beat you? But my question would be, one, are you going to still have your dad in your corner? Two, where are you going next? Because you still got the belts. Who are you going to entertain next to fight? Because of the standpoint of a lot of people think you got to beat fair and square. So Devin Haney, what's next for you? I think he wants that loss off his, his record. That's a, a lot of fighters are, are um, really kind of bent out of shape when they have a, a, you know, maybe a couple of losses on the record. But some of the greatest fighters have had losses on their records. But how do you come back from those losses is what I'm concerned about. Uh, everybody can't have an um, a undefeated record like a, a Rocky Marciano or Floyd Mayweather. Uh, but everybody wants that. They're aspiring to that. And um, I, it's no shame to a loss, and le you know, unless you just let it be a loss. If you come back from it and say, hey, I'm going to avenge this and I'm going to come back and beat this guy, I, I look at you as a better fighter. It's like when Ali lost against Frazier. Um, you know, he could have said a lot of things about the fight and all that other stuff. But he's like, no, I'm going to come back and I'm going to beat you. And then I'm going to beat you again, a trilogy, to make sure that, you know, this rubber match, that I was the better man in this the ring and I won two to one um, in this. And my record is two to one against you. Um, so... I guess I'm an old school dude. Um, you know, if you lose, train, come back, try to win. But uh, today's fighters, uh, they don't think like that. And I understand, you know, the guy, um, you know, may have, may or may not have used using drugs. But, you know, hey, you know, let it go. Train up. You know, if you get to fight him again, you know, prove that you're the better man. But um, it just seems like he's dead set. His, um, his father's dead set on getting this off his record. And to me, it's like more marketing and more um, marketing than anything to try to kind of save face for that loss and to try to block it out like it never happened. And that's impossible. We all saw it. It happened. Try to get over it. Come a better man. Come a better fighter. Come back harder next time. Pretty much it. We just ready for the next. The next great fight uh, had a hell of a matchup between uh, Usyk and uh, Fury. Uh, the little man won. So I had to acknowledge that, but uh, we're ready for the next, next. Uh, hopefully get some more uh, solid fights down the road and uh, we'll take it from there. Yeah, the little man with the gap teeth, all the gap teeth brothers out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> peace, peace to you, sir. <laughs> Love my gap teeth. All right, he's Ice Water, I'm Puma, and this is Fight Game.